Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another round of sound. It's the 25th anniversary season of this program, the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. We have a lot to get into tonight, including Steeler draft strategy. What are they going to do in the first round? They have some glaring needs. We'll get into that. We'll also talk about the Pirates who open up their season on Thursday. A lot of interesting numbers over under stuff coming up. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Penguins who continue to spiral out of control and basically are eliminated, not mathematically, but you know what I mean. We'll talk about all that and more, but right here is your panel. We have Jeff Athorn from 93.7 The Fan, Colin Dunlap, KDKA AM, 93.7 The Fan, and whatever else you can stick into a 24-hour day, and Will Graves from the Associated Press, looking very scholarly with the glasses tonight. Thanks, Pom. Just trying to keep <laughs> up with you, my man. Yeah. All right, let's start with um, the Penguins, Jeff, because... They're not going to get out of this, whatever they're in, whole. So we're going to start talking about what happens in the offseason because they have a lot of roadblocks in play. Kyle Dubas basically knows what he got into. There's no young answers in their system, at least ones we can see, that would you know make a difference come next year. What do they do in this offseason? Do they, do they run it back with minor changes or do they make wholesale changes? They pray. That's what they do this offseason. They pray. I mean, this is the first time in two decades, guys, that this team has been irrelevant this time of year. I mean, they're just irrelevant. And they yeah, don't even have anybody. last year went down to the final and, day. Right. right. I mean, so. and they don't have young players that they could come up and you could say, okay, let's watch these guys play. I mean, they don't have those options. The one, maybe Pustin and might be a guy, O'Connor might be a guy, they're already up. Um, listen, Kyle Dubas, is, he's locked by the contracts of those veterans. The only thing he could hope is that somehow next year, whether it's through a new, new coach or whatever, that their power play works. Because if that power play worked, even average in the NHL, they would be in the mix. Well, a question, though. You, you say he's locked by the veterans. In, in some ways, that he is. But aren't the Jari and the Carlson deals kind of attaching him to making big moves? And essentially, he rode with that, and that is telling to his future, I think. I mean, he came in and splashed those two moves, and it was like, that. to me, that says a lot about what he thought was going to happen with both of those guys. Well, well I think that, well, like, the, the bigger picture there was. Like, Carlson he, he hasn't got, been good. He got guys off the books. I mean, he got guys that with bad contracts. Like, that was. That trade, right. I mean, but they also expected Carlson to be better. Good. better, more effective on a nightly basis, right. right? The Jari thing, actually, like, the term I don't like, the five years, but if you look at his value and the way he's played, it's been, he hasn't well, had a great okay. stretch here mm -hmm. the last few weeks. But, you know, um, I think they needed some of the guys they got in that trade uh, for Jake. They bring them up. They need to treat like the Pirates treat September. You use it as a chance to figure out what you got with some of these young guys to give them a starting point, a baseline for next year. To Jeff's point, you know, he said that the thing that we can't say, right? Maybe a new coach. You know, it's it's weird. You know, like uh, like John Calipari was here this week, and we were talking. You know, he obviously came in with a big team, and and they. Lost again. Oh, it really, it was really yeah. unfortunate. Um, <laughs> round but like, of 64, like, but no, round like, of 64, so, like, again, and it's one of those things where it's like, is Sully a bad coach? No, he's he's got his name on the Stanley Cup twice. But it seems to me like he has to have a certain set, a certain type of roster, and the idea that they're going to get the roster that he needs. To, for them to be well, successful. Got to give them. Let me ask, let me and ask and you it doesn't this. have to be a head coach. It can be assistant coach or right. power play coach. Right. Let me ask you this, though. His answer today, I was hoping to get a little uh, Michael Terry in today. I was hoping to get soft. This is inexcusable. It was a 4 nothing lead. I know it's Colorado, but you just don't blow through 4 nothing leads like this, Jeff. The fact is they have not played well with the lead all year. They don't know how to play that way. And then for him to say, well, we played hard was his takeaway. I'm sorry. That's not a good enough excuse for me. I want to hear something more than that. I think they do play hard. They're just not good enough. Right. And they make little well, mistakes that before they could get away with, they're not good enough to get away with those lapses right. or those little mistakes that they used to be able to. Yeah, but before. at some point it needs to crawl all the way up to the top, or at least to the coach. And the fact that he is essentially like in, infallible here in town or that people aren't out against him. No, I don't say out against him. You don't want to have like a vendetta against him, but I, I just don't understand how he's made it this far, to be frank with it you. Is, it is tr like he is a good and coach. And especially in a league a where coach. they he's a good guys coach. go on a two-week right. losing streak and they're gone in right. hockey. I mean, the, and the thing any. is, like, you know, the teams that are, have been ahead of them this year have fired their guys. Right. Right, but when, when Kyle Dubas gets hired, what did he say? Mike, to uh, Mike not Tomlin. Mike Sullivan can be too. the head coach here as long as, as long as he wants. That's basically what he said. Oh. And the support from hired. the Fenway group right. that we like Mike Sullivan. It, you know it, it's the You might be able to get something. I'm sure Jersey would love to have him. It's, it's the, it's the, like, to me, it's the, the piece that's maybe the most easily changed. 
because he doesn't have a no trade clause. Obviously, he's got three. He's got his extension starts next season. Right. So it would, it would not be it would not be cheap to to make a change, but that's a change you can make. That's, I mean, heck, the Penguins have done that in one cups, right? I'm not saying the team's going to win a cup next year if they switch coaches, but like, it just doesn't. I mean, all this a long time to, to Colin's point. I mean, you know. If, the if shelf life not, for these guys is not is not as long. This is what nine years, right? If not now, when I, uh, I let guess. Me, let me ask you about Kyle Dubas. You have a couple minutes left here in this segment, so got to get this in. Uh, you know, he came in with all this fanfare. He's going to be something great. He didn't get it done in Toronto, and he had a nice roster there. How would you look at what he's done in this first season? And I'm talking about signing Ryan Graves. That was a big contract. Now, will he be better next year? He can't be worse, can he? Carlson. They brought him in knowing what he was, but I know that they wanted to get rid of some money. Uh, everything else he's done has just been kind of ho-hum. What do you grade him in his first year on this job, given what the stakes were and where they are seventh in the Metropolitan? Well, I mean, I've got to tell you at the time, I mean, the Lars Eller signing and the Chari and some of those bottom six guys, I thought they were going to bring the toughness that this team lacked. Graves has been bad. Hey, and, and I'm you sitting know what? right here. Yeah. <laughs> and, Carlson, no relation. <laughs> and, and Carlson, who, who didn't love it? I mean, who didn't love it when they signed him? Like, hey, Carlson on this power play, look out. It just I wouldn't worked. say I didn't love it, but what I did say was he is exactly what Chris Letang is, and you've doubled down but on what you had before. Here, you needed to get physical, more difficult, and win in different ways, and I saw none of that. Here's the problem they have. Because they have the long-term contracts of the, of the older players, they're locked into trying to win it now, so the Carlson yeah. thing made sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, you There's, have to wonder, too, if Dubas got talked into not changing those ways because the head coach didn't want to change his style, Bob. And I mean, like they were like they were one point out of a playoff spot and the team that got in made it ahead of them, made it to the finals. Right. You've got Hall of Famers on your roster. I what did he say? Like when we saw him a couple weeks ago and I and I, I said, you know, what makes you think what you see in the next couple of weeks is going to change the trajectory of this team? And he said the pedigree of this team demands that we give them as much leeway as possible. And I really think that was the mandate that he got when he got here. And I think this was like I've tried to patch this together. And now I think we will see probably significant changes in the offseason. All right, Jake Gensel comes to town on Tuesday as a member of the Carolina uh, Hurricanes already in seven games, two goals, nine assists, 11 points for him. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Pirates. We also have the Steelers, what they do on draft day. Otani making headlines for all maybe the wrong reasons. We'll get into that and more as we continue right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. All right, baseball season. Is officially open. We saw some games in Seoul, South Korea, but the Pirates will open on Thursday in Miami. So, Will Graves, I want to start with you on this one. Uh, it's it's a numbers game, 75 over under. Do you think they'll be better than they were last year? They made pretty good gains last year. Man, I, I I think the offense is showing signs of being better, but man, like the the pitching staff, you just you really don't know outside of really Mitch. I mean, Gonzalez. And, you know, he didn't have a great start. He got pounded by the Yankees the other day through BP. Perez, you know, we'll see what we get. And then after that, it's like a crapshoot, right? So offensively, I think the offense is good enough for them to be better than 75 wins, but I just worry about that staff. So you're going under? I'll go, slight, I'll go slightly over. Okay. 76. I won't. Oh. Same number. I'm going 75, actually. Yeah, I, okay. I, there's 70. By the way, you look very Easter today. I really like your tie, Bob. It's Easter. Yeah. Easter well, week. A week it's Palm it's Sunday. Easter week. Palm Sunday's all part of it. So this um, is, you know, whatever my wife does. Anyhow, it looks really palms. nice. Uh, 75 wins. I have the Pirates for 75 wins. They just they don't have enough in terms of starting pitching for me. First base is not a position where I think they're going to get a ton of output. I have questions about Triolo at second base. Although it's nice a kid like that made the team, but. I don't know. And then catching is a gigantic question, what they're going to get offensively and defensively, I think. You know, I have questions about this team, but I have questions about every team in the NL Central. Right, right. I don't yeah, think, right. I think it's a winnable that's, division. I think that's why they're going to be over 75 wins mm -hmm. because the rest of the division isn't that good. They're going to get a, a, a jolt from Skeens whenever he gets called up. I think Jared Jones is going to be a good pitcher for them. I, I agree. I am concerned about the rotation, but I think there are some options. And if they could get one more move, not an Eric Lauer, but like a real move, if they could make that proposed trade to Miami and get what Cabrera in here, like then yeah, I really feel about good. About Let me ask you about Paul Skeen since Jeff brought it up, uh, Colin. So here he is. He looks very good in, in the spring. He gets it up at 102 miles an hour. What do you have to see from him down there, or, or is this just strictly a I've clock seen situation? It. Like I've, I've seen. So he it. should be by rights here. Yes, now. and I get the argument. Here's the argument that I get from people that I understand, but I don't agree with. They say, "Well, you'd lose that last year of free agency, and you get an extra year." When it gets to that point, though, 
they're not going to afford his last year of arbitration anyway. It's going to be like how Garrett Cole was. So I, I'm a big believer you bring your best team north, and there's no way he's not part of their best team. That's just the way – if they wait on the clock and they get an extra year out of it, they're not going to sign him for that last year anyway. His arbitration year is going to be too expensive. So bring him north now. Too expensive for the Pirates. Correct. But not too expensive to trade him at the end, right? So, I mean, like, if you're playing the long I'm, game here, that's I'm the other side of the I'm long game, I'm Will. just telling you that's what that I means. Mean, but if, if, uh, you know, if, if, like, if guys like Strasburg, you know, can – I mean, he had, what, how many innings? Six innings in the minors last year? Six? Something like that? Skeens did after he yeah. signed? I'm okay with him getting a handful of – Well, then a, a few starts the organization and build him up to a point where he could – said when he was drafted that he was major league ready. People within the organization said that. And here's my issue. If they finish three or four games out, are you going to look back and say, because they waited till June, he could have won them those three or four games. You're, you, every message that you hear down there is that we're here to win now. It's about winning now. But sending Skeens to the minors is about, well, making sure we have well, also him for the this, future. Every sport you ever play. Baseball, you get at the end of the year. Well, game three is as important as game 152. Of course it is. Game hockey, game two is as important as game 80. Football, hey, back if we would have won in week three, it's as important as week 17. So is it or isn't it? Right. Well, but I it, but it, the, 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 the counter argument that to be would Garrett Cole himself. I mean, that was a season in 13, he gets called up in June 10th, 15th, whatever it was. They, they were treading water, and then they took off when he got here. And we just talked about, as Pop mentioned, I agree with you. I don't think anybody's going to win 105 games in this division. I mean, it might take 87 to, to 90 to get there. If the Pirates can hover around 500, they should be competitive. then, I, you know, I think it's okay that it's, it's not a death sentence if he's not here well, until some point, May 15th. Well, at some point, like, listen, bro, I'll, I'm going to be 48 this, years old this year. I've lived in this town my whole life. At some point, now needs to be now. Right. They've said now is now. But and – He's if he ain't now, then <laughs> then they can't scout people because he's one of their best five. All right, we got to go to another topic real quick, and that would be Otani, Jeff, because he's making headlines. Um, I'm not going to recap the whole story; it would take too long. But <laughs> he wiretapped money from uh, his personal um, translator, who got into a big hole, four and a half million dollars worth of debt with an, a gambling site or a gambler or a bookie who's under federal investigation. In California law, this could actually come back to him regardless of whether or not he bet or not. I was looking into and talked to a lawyer today because if you do that, you're also you guilty. into this, Bob? Yeah, <laughs> I was concerned He just wanted to make sure he wasn't <laughs> using the same bookie. Is that correct? Uh, I got to make sure who's <laughs> under investigation. Or not. What do you think is going to happen? If Nothing. anything, you don't think anything's going to happen? Otani is a star. He makes MLB yeah, but unbelievable money. It they... is going to be all on that translator. And maybe some other person's going to show up in this. It, they are not going to take away Shohei Otani from MLB. Are they? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I think, we, you know, you think of Pete Rose immediately, but Pete was a manager, and you can get rid of him. Even, even a guy that should be in the Hall of Fame, look, I get, to, I'm a, I get, I get a vote. I think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. I agree. Uh, but, I, you know, there's a lot of smoke there, man, a lot of I, smoke. I, but I, the guy's resume is iffy, right? Like he said, he graduated from a school in California. He didn't. I mean, this is the interpreter I'm talking about. So, Maybe this guy was – maybe he conned Shohei the, all along. I agree with Jeff. You know, Major League Baseball and all the sports really, but especially Major League Baseball, continues to try to grow internationally. This is their biggest international chip and their biggest domestic chip to some degree. They're going to find a fall guy, and they seem to already have found a fall guy. Whether Otani's guilty or not, this guy – this is like Balco and everything all over again. They're going to find their one guy. They're going to hammer him. And this guy's going to take it all. But, but if, I mean, the, you know, the, the thing that bothers me, though, how much, how much, what kind of contract does MLB have with FanDuel and these other sites, right? It's why totally are the lines? Disingenuous. Why are the lines splayed for, for baseball games? You know, it's it's everywhere. The, the money state. lines are when they show you the starting pitching, and they show you the in money game. line. In so game. it's hard for me to go to back. BBG Paints Arena. They got the whole. Bet but I did talk place. to Mason I mean, Cole about this last casino. summer I, I, about, in regards to the the NFL thing, and he said, look. You know, is it me? Is it worth me making a, a ten thousand dollar bet versus my contract and my livelihood? You know, beyond this, players should be able to make that delineation. I agree, right. but man, it's it's a it's bad. It's going to be interesting, something to watch for sure. But most people agree with Colin and Jeff that nothing's going to happen here because of who he is. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about 
What are we going to talk about? Your tie. No, the Steelers and what they should do next. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to get in the NCAA yeah. tournament and Duquesne and the city game next. All right, the Steelers have made lots of changes, but they need to make more. The draft is coming up in a little bit of more than a month. Well, let's talk about the draft. Uh, you know, they need wide receiving help. They need a center. Mike Tomlin talked about both yep. of those today. It's a deep wide receiving class. Do, does that make you think they'll go offensive line in the first round? And what if their guy isn't there? Do they then shift to go to a wide receiver? I think what they've learned in the last few years is you need to have quality guys on your line. And I think they're harder to come by than wide quality wide receivers. I would imagine they're going to get a tackle if they, if ones on, that they like the kid. Not a center? Georgia. There might be a setter in the second round, the kid from West Virginia, who we all like. You know, I mean, he's he's rated, but is he first round rated? No. I think Will hammered it. I, I think they are harder to find than receivers are. And the Steelers seemingly, I don't want to say luck their way into, but they figure out a way to make uh, receivers who you go, I wonder if that guy's going to be any good. They, they make them very good. Um, so I think they'll go offensive linemen. I, I, and I think that's a smart play. They have to. They have to. They need it. Haven't you guys learned anything from these news conferences? It's always best player available. Yeah, right. We take the best <laughs> player available, and that would happen to be either a center tackle or wide receiver. But to your guys' point, I mean, because of the way that college football is played now, there's so many more receivers that play at such a higher level and understand the game. You'll see receiver. Maybe it's not first round. It could be second and sixth. Well, what's the best move they made so far in this offseason? Um, I, I, the fields trade just because of the absolute – zero risk involved in it. I mean, in the most that's the best ratio to risks to upside. I think Russ, you know, he's cheap this year, but if he balls out, then he's expensive next year, right? Whereas I think Fields, who knows? That's I mean, it's stunning to me. Although I do like Patrick, I will say uh, Patrick Queen um, looks like he might be the guy there Can't for a while. Them all. Yeah, if Patrick Sorry. Queen, <laughs> well, well, we'll save the punter for you. Um, Patrick Queen, they're still searching for Ryan Shazier's successor. I mean, that's after all these years. After all these years, seven Bob, years later, yeah. Right, and that's what's happening. And they're taking a flyer that Patrick Queen can be that guy. Ryan Shazier was he was headed to be a Hall of Fame guy, maybe, yeah. and he really was. And they haven't found a replacement. Do you know how many how much better this team would be if they had a punter that could pin it inside <laughs> the twenty and could kick it at forty-seven point <laughs> seven yards that like Cameron Johnston did? The punter is the no. I mean, I agree with you guys, but to be different. Yeah, and he's making a lot of money too. That punter, isn't he? It's like four and a half million. He, he a year. is. He is miles better than what they've had over the last couple. of Varsity years. punting. Yeah. Be a lot of varsity punting happening. <laughs> That's right. And he can hold too. It's amazing. He better be able to hold. All right, we're <laughs> gonna uh, hold the conversation about NCAA coming up. It's next. We'll talk about Duquesne, historic season. And what about the city game? How soon should it be back? That's next. All right, welcome back. This is the 25th year of doing this show, the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. 2009, LeVance Fields doing some stuff against Xavier. They got into the Elite Eight, but then it was Scotty Reynolds ending their season. But that's the last time Pitt got that far. And they didn't get a chance this year because they didn't get in, Colin Dunlap. Looking back at some of the other stuff you've seen now from this tournament, including NC State, should Pitt have gotten in? Yes. Quick, quick. Why did you show that? That's like Scotty Reynolds is like, <laughs> Barry Goheen, you're not allowed to show those. But yes, Pitt should have got in, particularly with the with what the ACC has done. Will and right. I were just talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and the, the irony is UVA gets in over Pitt because they're the third place team in the ACC in the regular season, and they got mauled, right? And everybody else, they can't is score. Playing well. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, obviously, the SEC should have gotten more teams in because yeah. they're really good. <laughs> Talk about Jeff uh, Duquesne, what it did, and the city game. Seems to me like this is an automatic thing, and Pitt actually would have been better off playing them this year than they were West Virginia, as it turned out. Why? What's the hesitation? Why not? Let's start with this. If we go back in the archives when Keith Danbrot was hired and he said, I want to bring Duquesne back to Providence, what was the scoffing at those right. comments? Right. Congratulations to yep, him. He absolutely. did something that nobody Class could act. do, and he did it the right way, and he did it with good kids. Like, uh, kudos to him, yeah. man. Uh, as for this city game, I hope we see it. I, I don't. I don't have any update that it's that it's eminent though. It never should have gone away. It's an embarrassment. They don't play it. It's ridiculous. It's awful for the basketball community here in Pittsburgh. Uh, they should find a way to play. It's much like the Pitt Penn State football discussion. Um, they've just got to find a way, but it's much easier to play in basketball. So it just shouldn't go away. I mean, I, I wrote a story this week sort of talking about Chuck Cooper and the history of the program um, and they actually stopped playing for a while and then from 39 to 53 they didn't play at all part of that was because the rivalry become too heated and part of that was because Duquesne zoomed past Pitt 
in terms of success. Mm -hmm. It came back after what 14 year layoff. I'm optimistic they will come to their senses who's at to some blame? point. Real quick, we have well, to I mean, it's, it's who's to blame? It's obvious that Pitt, if you're going to, I mean, Pitt's to blame because Duke King would obviously happily play them. And, but I'm sure in Pitt's like, there's more risk involved than reward playing them. It's one of the reasons that they're not playing. Uh, doesn't make any doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense to me. Now, here's the thing Jeff Capel should probably capitalize on Duquesne's success at this point and play yeah. them. People want it now more than ever, yeah. and both teams could capitalize on Duquesne. How about play them all at PBG Paints Arena and not well, on campus? I'd love to see case. what they do in Philly and have West Virginia, Penn State, uh, Pitt, and Duquesne play yeah. some type well, of an old Steel turnout. Bowl. Turnout. Like they yeah, play not? the Steel Bowl, yeah. right. All right. Well, we'll find out. Uh, this season, however, coming up, you're not going to see it. I know this. Duquesne was a champion of the Atlantic 10, and becoming a champion is hard to do. They did it the hard way, too, but scoring, slam dunk savings at number one Cochran Ford, that's really easy. There are four Ford stores give you a big assist in every way. Choose from a stacked lineup of new vehicles, get game-winning offers, and enjoy the star treatment with a clearly better car buying experience. Score your slam dunk right now. Big savings at any of the four number one Cochrane Ford stores or online at Cochrane.com. We'll be right back. It's been fun. We are done. NCAA tournament, a smashing success. Duquesne University did a great job hosting. Good game, awesome. too. Awesome. Jack Golke, a legend forever. I mean, that kid from <laughs> Oakland, hope he's governor of Michigan one day. He's oh. still shooting threes and making them against Kentucky. That's going to do it. We'll see you again next week right here for another edition of the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. Shout out, Wanda King. <laughs>